And uh, Richard Forster, we were talking about uh, uh, Dollar General up in uh, Pioneer. Do you want to talk about it a little bit? Uh, during the break, we had uh, uh, we zoomed in a little bit on uh, that picture you were trying to show us. So maybe that's that's right. Be able to hey, we can bring that up, bring up while that up. I'm talking about this. But okay. they, they they've also and this is from the Dollar General people from the builder and the attorney. And uh, we have the picture up so you can see on the top is a uh, typical Dollar General looks. On the bottom is how they propose the store design to look where they break it up, where they have some arches and uh, try to make it look um, a little more country. But you know, so the I'm people... Sure that it, looks, it, it looks about 100% better to me. Well, the people up country were still... The people in the area were still upset about it because they say it, it's still just a metal building. And uh, it's going to have that metal look or that kind of look to it. Um, okay. The the deliveries, what they say is going to happen based on a question that came up, is that uh, Dollar General stores well delivered to the site. It won't be a lot. It'll be um, about one truck delivery per week of Dollar General trucks, corporate trucks. But then they said other trucks like uh, Coca Cola, Little Debbie, Frito Lay will deli right. be delivering. On a uh, once a week as well schedule, they're smaller trucks. Um, community benefits, this is what they say. As far as what Dollar General does, it's a, uh, approximately $2 million of improvements to the building and land improvements. They'll hire local subcontractors for the construction of the building whenever possible. They say that Dollar General has a uh, Dollar General Literacy Foundation that will contribute to the community. And uh, they say they've awarded $97 million in grants to nonprofit organizations to date. And uh, these grants benefit nonprofit organizations, schools, and libraries within a 20 mile radius of the Dollar General stores. Uh, Pioneer community would be eligible to apply, is what they say. Mm -hmm. Uh, the store, they say, will have 10 to 12 new full-time employees. Um, store employees are typically hired from the local community, and the store will generate increased sales tax, property tax revenues, and uh, once open for business, it will provide shopping options for the community. Um, you can't disagree with some of that. What people say, though, is that the prices of Dollar General are typically higher than some of the other stores in the county. It will drive out our local businesses, our local mom and pop store businesses. It, um, the people that are hired are not earning the highest wages out there. So there's a lot of uh, negative remarks that, that still are out there. And I, I understand my people still don't want the Dollar General. As I said, uh, I've never shopped in a Dollar General. I probably never will just because it's my own personal preference. That's kind of the way I look at it, that people uh, can make that preference if they still want to shop at uh, local stores, what I consider local, like Claypool's and Pine Grove and like the other stores in yeah. Pioneer, then the pay less market. continue to shop there. Uh, so that's, um, pay less, right? that's where we're at with Dollar General. Uh, next up, we have the administrative agency, and we're going to be talking about the $2.5 million in one-time only money that's co okay. come in from the state. Um, Sounds like a lot of money. It's not. So, so you're getting that prioritized? We're going to try and prioritize it someplace, but uh, we don't know where yet. But uh, our CAO, Chuck Eiley, said uh, these funds are coming in from one time places the triple flip reimbursement, which the triple flip, as far as, um, as of 2016, goes away, and we go back to uh, a different uh, taxing structure on the people. Um, the sale of the courthouse bring, brought in some money, state reimbursement of mandates. And uh, this revenue would only be one time. It's not anticipated in future years. So as our CAO says, uh, we need to take this basically out of the budget if we're not going to spend it, put it in a separate account where it does not require that four-fifths vote to bring it out. Or it just makes it easier to deal with the process. All right. um, money should be spent, and here's what his recommendations are. And I know we've all given our two cents here or there, but uh, Public Works, they have a... Um, as we know, our roads are in pretty bad shape, and uh, they could use the whole $2.5 million. There, there could be a, a, a really a well-thought-out argument to say, we need to put that money into our roads. But here's the other expenses they've come up with. New York Ranch Road is going to have an intersection improvement at New York and Ridge Road, and uh, there's going to be, it looks like, an additional $400,000 of expense on a... Um, project for a retaining wall work that's needed with, with that project. So there's 400000 right there. 
um, the uh, public works crew quarters uh, where they have all of their meetings and uh, where the, uh, the public works individuals get together and do testing and everything else. That's $150,000 to fix that building. It's just falling apart. Uh, facilities um, could eat up all that money very easily. Our library is in need of money because right now our, our uh, Emory County Library in Jackson has a um, porta potty outside. The reason yeah. why is because we don't have an ADA bathroom oh, yeah. inside. Well, there's another $400,000 right there if we want to do that. Probably needs to be done. The uh, district attorney's building is uh, a lot of that is falling apart. Right. Needs to be painted. It needs uh, some other uh, some HVAC work. The HVAC system there. They're holding it together basically right now with baling wire, um, just to fix the uh, HVAC system as $126,000. But then to paint the building and to um, maintain the outside of the building. The siding and soffits are, are right. starting to fall apart. And a lot of that isn't just aesthetics. That's to uh, to keep it from falling apart or deteriorating. Right. And uh, and come up with and would have a higher uh, cost more to fix it later. That's right. right. Well, and that's what the, our maintenance people are saying. Uh, they're holding everything together with bale and wire right now. This is two hundred thousand dollars though, just to do that outside work on the building. If we don't do it, the building will continue to deteriorate yeah. and fall apart. Probation office, um, the carpet's basically in bad shape in that office. That'll be about $30,000. Um, there are a number of other small projects with our facilities that need to, be, need to be done. We need to prioritize that list. If we did all of them, though, there's going to be about $800,000. And a big part of that, one that I think is uh, immediate at our county administration center, we have um, some issues there. It's a fairly brand new building, fairly new building, right. but we have some issues uh, with the internal circulation, and uh, that needs to be fixed. Otherwise, you start getting mildew, and, and your building will deteriorate more quickly that way. Uh, the other thing is the, uh, and it is other. It seems like if you have mildew issues, you can open you up to uh, lawsuits as well for health issues, possibly. But. Well, uh, yeah, and here's another one. Uh, an, Another thing, other post-employment benefits. These are um, li uh, liability for us called OPEB, OPEB liabilities, other post-employee benefits. We have an account that uh, set up with a company called PARS to put money in to uh, take care of our post-employees. So all the retirees that we have in the county, we have to take care of their benefits as they retire. If you don't, you have an unfunded liability out there. Well, right now, we have not been taking care of those, and, and they've been accumulating. So we have about uh, $290,000 in uh, OPEB liabilities right now. We could take a um, uh, portion of that money and take about 290 and put it in there. Well, excuse me, I misspoke. That's 290 that we could put into it, uh, and that's the current account value. But then the liability for the county, the valuation placed on the county's liability is approximately $2.4 million. So we could use the whole $2.5 million to bring that OPEB liability down. So so where do we sit? Uh, we, uh, By my calculations, we're at about, if we do everything that I just said, we're at about uh, $2.48 million. So you got about 20000 left over. Not, okay. not a lot of money. But um, I know the employees, um, probably would like to see a share of this money go to um, the new contracts that are coming, that are being negotiated right now. Um, these are one-time monies. So one-time monies, uh, well, no, I'll just leave it there. Okay. Yeah, they are one-time monies, and who knows, by, by the end of the day tomorrow, we may change some of that. Uh, I'm looking at some of those things like the Post-employee retirement benefits, those, those things need to be funded. And if they're not funded, right. we just create a liability for who's ever in my seat you and other unfunded, supervisors. Then you will, we will be building up here locally on unfunded liabilities as well. Right. Well, And then uh, the supervisor who takes my place whenever I leave and other supervisors, they're going to be saddled with trying to deal with this uh, unfunded yeah. liability. All right, Richard. We have one <laughs> minute left. Uh, uh, just Ascension? quickly, uh, you, you taped the, um, right. 
the uh, the, it was the, uh, the, the uh, meeting the, the last week, meeting? which was the technical advisory committee meeting. This meeting is to process an application and move it forward to the planning commission. Um, you've taped it, and people have the opportunity to see it on TSPN. But the group that is putting this plan forward is so disingenuous, and that's not my word. That's uh, under Sheriff Jim Wagner's word. Um, they misrepresented how they started this process because they called it a family reunion right. with, with friends. Well, it was a dry run for this Ascension event. And you know how I know that now even more is they have it on a, uh, a meeting from a website that their group who now wants to sell shares said, look, nobody even said anything about the noise. All right. This is uh, it's a big issue, but we ran out of time. Okay, uh, thanks for watching TSPN and uh, make it to the Board of Supervisors uh, tomorrow if you're interested. And there's some uh, very interesting things on, uh, on the short meeting. Stay with us. There's more coming up right after this.